This is the 52nd Annual Priority Charity Bowl from the campus of Old Dominion University. Welcome to the 52nd Annual Priority Toyota Charity Bowl here on the campus of Old Dominion University. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jessica Larche. And I'm Blaine Stewart. This is a beautiful stadium oh, and a beautiful field, Jessica. It is gorgeous. It's our first time here since they redid SB Ballard Stadium. And my goodness, is it gorgeous. There is not a bad seat in the house. They've got that fancy squishy <laughs> turf, too. I don't know. I feel like I could play pro football. But we are here for a very important day. In fact, this is a long running tradition. It's the nation's longest running flag football game. I tried to get out there in the field with them a little while. They just said, go grab the microphone, do what oh. you know how to do. It wasn't even pretty. Yeah, that is not our ministry. That is not for us. <laughs> Everybody plays a role in this. More importantly, we are showcasing the 39 charities that help our children all across Hampton Roads, we're talking about the South Side Peninsula, Northeastern North Carolina, the Eastern Shore, all over. And you know, this year we have set a record raising $770,000 for children's charities, 39 charities, and all of that money stays right here in Hampton Roads. Now, over the next hour, I want you to stick around because we're going to showcase those charities, the people who are doing great work right here where we live. And who knows, maybe you might get inspired too to join in and take action yourself. But first, we have to check in with the guy who makes this all possible, Mr. Priority Automotive Group himself, Dennis Elmer. Hello, my name is Dennis Elmer, and welcome to this year's 52nd Priority Toyota Charity Bowl. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors for all the great work they do uh, and have done this year in making this the all-time record uh, Charity Bowl ever, uh, and we're going to raise $750,000 for th these 39 charities, and I can't thank you enough. Dennis, thank you for all you do for the kids here in our area. We are so happy to have you be a part of the Charity Bowl. And now I am joined by a man who has been here for all 52 Charity Bowls, Mr. Ray Potter. Ray, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure. It's a true honor to be a part of this. What does it mean to, to see 52 Charity Bowls and all the good things you've done for kids in this area? Well, it's overwhelming, but it's always been a team effort. It's, it's not been about me. It's about young people like these new Old Dominion players that come out to uh, keep this thing going. It's an amazing tackle game we had for 44 years, and I couldn't keep doing that. I'm smart enough to move to flag football, save some legs, <laughs> and uh, I fed all my parts replaced, so I'm okay. But uh, it's it's truly a, a, a overwhelming to be to be see that <clears throat> the charities that get this uh, every every year and the, the Joy Fund was the original charity and know that the kids are still getting presents because of this game means so much stuff so many people and now there's some 40 charities that because of Priority Auto Group that is getting these getting donations it's amazing you know Ray it's 52 years and you still get choked up I'm sorry <laughs> thinking about the lives that yeah. you've touched what does that mean to you there will be children you you you'll never meet but lives have been changed because of your generosity well it's 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 a team effort I've had a, a lot of help but I've gone to the uh, just toy distribution and seen these families getting the toys for Christmas and many years uh, went to that help distribute it had my teammates go with me to help distribute those toys and it's truly amazing and now I got my grandkids out here helping now and some of them have actually played in this game and my son has played in the tackle game and the flag game and helped me coach the tackle game it's been an amazing amazing run to still be standing <laughs> amazing ray potter thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for thank all you, you do for our community thank you ma'am absolutely uh, let's send it up to blaine jessica thanks you know september is a very important month it is hunger action month Two years ago, the Food Bank of Southeastern Virginia and the Eastern Shore had a huge task, distributing one and a half million pounds of food every month. Of course, that number pumped up because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but pandemic or not, the Food Bank is always busy, always hard at work serving the entire 4,045 square mile area from Western Tidewater to the Eastern Shore, and they need your help. This is their story. This year, the Food Bank is celebrating our 40th anniversary. So for 40 years, we have been part of this community, guided by our mission of ending hunger and food insecurity here. We do that through a number of programs aimed to get food to our neighbors who need it the most. 
In Southampton Roads, like everywhere around the country, our neighbors have been impacted by the COVID pandemic. Um, people lost jobs, they lost hours at their jobs. People um, struggled having children home from school who normally would get meals in school. All of that has led to an impact on our neighbors who could least afford that impact. Um, so for food, insecure neighbors, people who may be low income and experiencing food insecurity, the food that we donate through the food bank and through our agency partners really is critical for them. Um, last year we donated nearly 18 million pounds of food, but we did see the need for food in our community increase. What we have found is that there are a variety of factors that impact um, communities who are disparately impacted by food insecurity. So things like um, lack of access to transportation, um, living in a food desert where the grocery store may not be readily near you. Um, to address those kinds of issues, we've launched a brand new initiative called the 757 Mobile Markets. We identified communities that are significantly impacted by food insecurity, and on our mobile market, which is a farmer's market on wheels, we bring the food that you need directly to you. So a 40-foot truck is stocked with fresh produce, fresh vegetables, milk and other dairy products, lean protein, um, and it stops in the community so that you don't need to go to the food. The food is being brought to you. We are planning to serve um, about 450 households per week during our farmer's market, mobile market stops. And we are hearing from the community so far that it really is making a phenomenal difference for them. The backpack program is uh, really a long-term program here at the food bank, which is designed to make sure that children who are receiving free and reduced lunches at their school also have food to sustain them throughout the weekend when they're not at school. So healthy, fresh, nutritious foods are provided to students in backpacks um, that they can take home to ensure that they have meals throughout the weekend. Since our inception, we've distributed more than 450,000 backpacks to children in need here in our community. September is Hunger Action Month, which is really a time that we encourage everyone to get involved in the movement to end hunger. Whether you are able to host your own food drive or give an hour of your time volunteering at the food bank or donate to the food bank, we want everyone to learn about hunger and food insecurity and how it's impacting our neighbors right here in Southampton. Hampton Roads and on the Eastern Shore and do whatever you can to make a difference for your neighbors. We um, love the Priority Charity Bowl. It is um, a great event that gets folks engaged around the idea of hunger and food insecurity. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we can't do what we do here at the food bank without the partnership um, and support of the community. And so thrilled to be a part of the Charity Bowl this year and encourage everyone to get involved and engaged. You're watching the Priority Charity Bowl on News 3. Welcome back to the 52nd annual Priority Toyota Charity Bowl here on the campus of Old Dominion University. Right now, I am joined by the president of Old Dominion University, the new president, Dr. Brian Hemphill. Thank you so much for joining us, and this is your very first Charity Bowl. Yes, it is. I'm excited. It's going to be an amazing night. We, we know we've uh, raised almost $800,000 at this point for nearly 40 charities right here in our community. What does it mean to you for ODU to be a part of giving back to your community? It means so much. 
ODU is all about engagement with the community and to be able to join forces with Dennis Elmer and members of his team to have an event like this is outstanding. So we're excited to be here. And we know this sets a huge example for your student athletes. What do you hope they learn from the importance of giving back? I, I hope that as they see this opportunity, they, they understand the importance of giving and engaging because we're so fortunate, we're so blessed, and to be able to help those that are in need means so much to our community. And that's why it's such a great cause. That's really the fabric of Hampton Roads. Dr. Brian Hempel, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Thank you so much. Welcome back to our coverage of the Priority Toyota Charity Bowl here at the ODU campus. You know, a lot of us, of course, are familiar with what the past year and a half has done for our mental health. Extreme bouts of isolation because of the pandemic, and it's really hit our kids hard. From classes going online so they're not in school seeing their friends, sports teams, extracurricular activities have all been canceled, and this has led to cases of anxiety and depression, really putting the mental wellness of our kids front and center. There is one organization that can help with that, Bacon Street Youth and Family Services. Our numbers went up pretty dramatically from uh, from last year to this year. Um, one of the challenges with COVID has been mental health is something that um, the numbers are just continuing to go up, 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 up. And I think that what's important to keep in mind is as we look at the mental health of our young people and our families right now, we need to be prepared for the fact that the next wave of COVID is likely going to be something that is going to cause problems um, for the next five to 10 years. This isn't something that is gonna be done in the next year or two. We've been taught as a society that we, um, that we shouldn't talk about our mental health issues. The reality is, is that it is just as predominant as a, um, as a disease as many other diseases are in our society. I often will use the statistic of one in seven. Um, one in seven people in our society right now has a substance use disorder, an active substance use disorder. One in four people in our, in our society right now has uh, either a m substance use or mental health disorder. And when you get down to lifespan, one out of every two people will, by the time their life is over, have had a mental health or substance use disorder. So that means 50% of our population is going through something on, on a regular basis, and we're not talking about it as a society, and that's wrong. It's really, really hard on, on young people, on families who feel isolated, who feel like they can't, um, they can't talk about what's going on with them. And the reality is, is that mental health disorders are a disease just like diabetes or cancer. And if you were to talk to somebody about um, cancer, it's not like somebody's gonna make, make fun or tease somebody if they have cancer. <laughs> But they do, there, there is um, definitely a stigma around mental health and substance use disorders um, that, um, uh, that causes people to be less inclined to talk about those things. Mental health disorders are everything from anxiety to depression to uh, multiple personalities disorders. Um, it can be um, anger, uh, anger issues. There's a lot of different kinds of things that fit into the bigger category of a mental health issue. The other thing about mental health issues is that they are an unseen disorder. So you cannot tell just by looking at somebody that there might be something going on, which makes it very easy to pass. It's not like um, if you have a broken leg, people can tell you have broken leg because <laughs> you have a cast on. Um, with a mental health disorder, if you've got something going on, sometimes um, you can keep it hidden for a long time. So I think the most important thing that I can talk to kids, uh, that I talk to parents about when we discuss um, what to look for with their kids is pay attention to what they're saying and what they're not saying. Listen to them and um, really get to know your children. Um, if they are an active athlete and suddenly they stop participating in sports, that's a red flag. If you've got somebody who is bouncy and chatty all the time, um, who um, is really gregarious and suddenly seems more withdrawn and is not talking to anybody, that's a red flag. Really talk to your kids about what's going on in their lives and find out what's going on with them. Now, there is no magical solution to this. Um, there's no magic. This is uh, A plus B equals C kind of equation about how this works. 
the reality is that um, sometimes um, kids aren't even necessarily aware of the fact that they're struggling with something. Now we turn our attention to a charity that is doing some really serious work. Every 68 seconds, someone in the United States is sexually assaulted. That means since we've been on the air, 22 people have been sexually assaulted. 22. That's why the organization Fear to Freedom was created to help prevent sexual assault through empowerment and education. And they want to show the world that freedom is more powerful than fear. Well, one of the reasons the number has increased um, to 68 seconds from every two minutes 10 years ago, one reason is actually empowering because more survivors are coming forward to say their stories. That's actually a, a positive thing, but when you consider that the number is every 68 seconds, that is still appalling. And that's why our prevention programs are needed. Here at Fear to Freedom, we, we in, empower and educate students and communities to prevent sexual violence in all its forms. That includes sexual assault, domestic violence, and child abuse. So we have our to empower programs that uh, are for university students and community groups that take, take communities and students through what can be done to change that number, because that's what we want to see change. We want to see that number be less and less and less. So not every 68 seconds. But when I started here at Fear to Freedom, I thought that this was a gender issue, that it was just for women, but it's not. Men are affected, uh, girls are affected, boys are affected, those of all genders are affected. The way to reverse that statistic of every 68 seconds is for more people to be educated and more people to be empowered, more people to take a stand and say, this is not right. Domestic abuse is not right. Child abuse is not right. Uh, sexual assault is not right, and it's not going to happen on our watch. If more people were empowered to take, take a step and do what they can within their own area of influence, I think we would see those numbers change. And that's what we hope for and why we have seven different programs we offer universities and communities to participate in. Uh, we believe that education is an important part of that answer, and uh, that's why we're doing what we're doing. So here at Fear to Freedom, we have a, a two-pronged approach to support survivors of sexual assault, domestic violence, and child abuse on their healing journeys. We provide aftercare and eye care kits for them for when children go through the SANE exam that documents domestic violence and child abuse. Uh, forensic nurses are able to give them um, items in our eye care and aftercare kits. And in the kits, they have things that will help them. They have clothing and toiletries. And for the children, there's coloring books and a journal and crayons. But they also have Freedom Bear. Freedom Bear is Fear to Freedom's um, trademark therapy tool. And Freedom Bear was designed by um, a woman who was a survivor of, of a sexual assault when she was a child. And her teddy bear was ripped and had a hole in his heart. And so her name was Molly. And Molly used to take her fears and her concerns. She would put them inside of her bear's uh, heart. And when she was ready to release them years later, she let them go. So Freedom Bear was designed so that here on his backpack, there are little slips of paper so that the survivor can write uh, their hurts and their pain what is their concern and put put those inside Freedom Bear and then however long it takes, it could be weeks, it could be months, it could be years, when the survivor is ready to let it go, they're able to take that out and then their pain dissolves in water. Part of our aftercare kits here at Fear to Freedom are handwritten notes that our volunteers write. And again, that is one of the most important things in our aftercare kits, along with Freedom Bear. Uh, the fact that volunteers take the time to write a message to a survivor when they're in one of the most difficult times of their lives, when they receive this kit, they know that somebody is caring for them. Somebody took the time to write a message of encouragement and of comfort to say, it's not your fault. And you are brave and be courageous and um, messages of comfort at that time. 
I want to introduce you to the Freedom Bear. It, it serves as a reminder to sexual assault survivors to remember this is not your fault. You do not deserve this pain. And no matter what wounded your heart, you are worthy of love and caring. If you have been a victim of sexual assault, we urge you to call the National Sexual Assault Hotline at 1-800-656-4673. During this hour, it's our pleasure to highlight the 39 children's charities who are benefiting from this year's Priority Toyota Charity Bowl. Here's a look at some of them right now. Aid Now, a locally based charity with a mission of providing haircuts, clothing, food, hygiene products, and school supplies to 500 homeless Virginia Beach students. Bacon Street Youth and Family Services, a private not-for-profit group that provides counseling, prevention programs, and community education to children, young adults, and families impacted by substance abuse and mental illness. Boys and Girls Clubs of Southeast Virginia, enabling all young people to reach their full potential as productive, caring, responsible citizens. The Center for Child and Family Services, whose mission is to provide quality counseling and support services that empower both children and their families to improve their lives. The Chesapeake Bay Academy, which creates individualized academic programs to address a student's learning differences, empowering them with the skills and confidence needed for success in school, jobs, and life. Children's Assistive Technology Service, or CATS, which helps children with disabilities. Families help other families by passing on gently used pediatric adaptive devices and mobility equipment at no cost. Children's Health Investment Program of Southampton Roads. CHIP believes in building healthy communities by building healthy children, with the vision that all children enter school healthy and ready to learn and succeed. Children's Hospital of the King's Daughters, lighting the way for mental health in the form of a 14-story, $224 million mental health hospital and outpatient center for children, set to open in 2022. Crisis Pregnancy Center of Tidewater, helping moms and dads in Southampton Roads who were unprepared for pregnancy with free prenatal services, counseling, and parenting classes. The Downtown Hampton Child Development Center, with a mission to nurture young children by providing affordable, quality preschool programs that develop the whole child, preparing them for their school years. The Eastern Shore Chapel Episcopal Church, whose chapel pantry serves families experiencing food insecurity by providing fresh, nutritious groceries, treating each guest with kindness and respect. Edmark Hospice for Children eases the trauma of a child's illness or death and aims to reduce the disabling effects in families who struggle to cope with illness, loss, and bereavement. Elf Patrol Incorporated, providing Christmas for children in hospice care, living in shelters, or experiencing homelessness. Their motto, sharing hope, one smile at a time. Welcome back to News 3's coverage of the Priority Toyota Charity Bowl. You know, founded in 2009, Toby's Dream Foundation is dedicated to bringing joy to children with life-threatening issues. With one simple mission, they grant them the wish of a lifetime. Toby's Dream Foundation is named for and inspired by Toby Vaughn. Toby's love for people was unmistakable, and his passion for making children's dreams come true was contagious. He recruited friends and family to join him in his quest to touch the lives of these special children. You know, one of those special children was Dalton. Dalton left us earlier this year, but this is not a story about how he died. This is a story about how Dalton lived. Dalton was a fu funny, sarcastic, intelligent, uh, you know, just all around awesome kid. He was smart, he was witty, um, and you try and, as a parent, to say, okay, well, we need you to do this, Dalton. Or, and he would come back with something really quick, and I'm like, dang, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he was hard to argue with. Um, he gets that from his mom. <laughs> <laughs> He just wanted to be a normal kid, and then cancer um, crept in. Uh, when he was nine, he was diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma in his left leg. Uh, he had some chemo and uh, 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 limb salvage surgery. We tried to keep his life as normal as possible, um, and if that meant going to 
doctor's visits and chemotherapy and he did it. Um, not always with a smile on his face, but most of the time with a smile on his face. We got him a shirt and it said missing leg story and it had a picture of a $20 bill in, on it because Dalton didn't like to be stared at, but when you're bald and you're 12 or 11 and, uh, and you're missing your leg and you got a prosthetic leg, people are going to stare. So I think he decided he was going to lean into it and, and just have some fun with it. One time a little kid at elementary school, I, he said, are, are you missing your leg? And he said, no, it's on vacation. It's coming back next week. So just a, just a goofball. Um, but like Jen said, he, just, he didn't want to be defined by cancer. He just wanted to be a regular kid. Loved baseball, loved animals, especially lemurs. So he had a big picture of a lemur on his uh, prosthetic leg. And uh, Jen, his mom here, got tired of saying, go get your leg, put your leg on. So he named it uh, Larry. I mean, that video is, is Dalton. And that's our family, is um, him just being a goofball, jumping around. He's got one leg, and he's dancing. Not that it's a high bar, but he's dancing way better than I ever could. <laughs> I was definitely first in line when it said cancer doesn't get my kid, right? My kid doesn't get cancer. Um, you think, oh, kids with cancer, that stinks, but it's not going to happen to my kid. And then it did happen to our kid, and he, unfortunately, he passed away. Toby's Dream Foundation was created to ensure that children with life-threatening illnesses living in Greater Hampton Roads and beyond have the opportunity and resources to imagine and experience their most fantastic dream. 88% of every dollar spent goes directly to the children. We're here for the children. We reached out to Toby's dream. So what can you do? Dalton wants, he wants to go on a trip. So Joan and the team worked magic um, and gave him his trip off for spring break of 2021. A couple of doctors said they didn't think, afterwards, they said they didn't think he'd get to go because he was, he was very sick and he, he, he got a little better for this trip. But he went and he fished. And he was sick that day, but he had a great time. I mean, come on, look at that smile <laughs> with his fish. He kissed the fish. Um, he was going after mahi um, on this fishing trip. It didn't come, but he got a sailfish, and the smile tells you all that he, that was his dream, and Toby's made that happen. And we can't thank him enough for giving us this no. picture book of memories. Toby's foundation just, it gave us a time as a family of four, and probably a pretty dark time. Um, we got to see all of them smile again, Knowing Dalton, he did pass away, but to have that experience just six weeks prior to his passing, he, he had fun, and he wasn't, he wasn't sick in his mind at that time. He was just being a kid at Disney, um, eating the food, riding the rides, and having the time of his life. And we were thankful and grateful for Toby's for giving us that opportunity. Proud to be back here highlighting the many charities and the great work that's happening with the Priority Toyota Charity Bowl. We have Norfolk Mayor Kenny Alexander joining us. Mr. Mayor, always a pleasure to chat with you here on News 3. It's always good to be with you, Blaine. And this is a very big day for Norfolk. What does it mean for the Charity Bowl to be here in the Mermaid City? You know, it's, it's wonderful to have 39 charities that will benefit from the generosity of so many sponsors, so many donors, uh, led by Dennis Elmer and the Priority Auto uh, family. It's great. Now, one of those charities so you might have seen if you're driving on Hampton Boulevard or Brambleton, it's that new building going up on the CHKD campus, focusing on mental health for children. We know that is such an important issue here in Norfolk. Absolutely. That uh, donation is about $250,000 from this charity to benefit our children right here in Hampton Roads that may be experiencing some mental health crisis. And that's wonderful to have the resource but also to have the hospital, but more importantly, the generosity of so many donors. And this is such a unique facility that is about to be built. I had the chance to visit, almost done with the building and everything inside. Take a look at what we found when we went out there. This is CHKD's new children's pavilion, and it is gonna be the home of an amazing and incredibly needed mental health hospital for children. It's going to have 60 inpatient beds, and it's going to have 
the full continuum of outpatient mental health services for children, something that we don't currently have in our community, in our region, and even in the Commonwealth, and one of the very few that we have across the whole United States. What makes this building so special and unique compared to where children are being treated right now? So right now, CHKD has no inpatient psychiatric beds for children or adolescents. So the fact that we built this beautiful tower, which is really going to be a beacon of hope, health and healing for all children in our community, is really remarkable. So this will be a place where children can come, not only for their mental health needs, but also for other uh, primary care needs, for sports injuries. We want to destigmatize uh, the issue of mental health and the crisis in our children so that children feel as natural coming to this facility for all kinds of care, including their mental health needs, as they would for any other medical service. When you talk about mental health in our young people today, how big of an issue is this? When I use the word crisis, it, it literally is a crisis. And the pandemic has only made the crisis more acute for our children. So we know that before the pandemic, one in five children has a diagnosable mental health condition. Adults who have mental health conditions, 50% of those adults had the onset of that condition before they were 14 years of age. So if we can get to these children early, we can start identifying, diagnosing, treating, imagine the trajectory of their lives that we can change through this process and through what this initiative is bringing to our community. We're almost complete with this building. How excited is everyone to get moved in and get to work? We are thrilled that we're about one year away from accepting our first inpatients into this new facility. Our team is at work now. So we have a wide range of outpatient services for mental health for children right now, but we don't have the inpatient beds online yet. So, you know, the, the sad reality is that in our emergency department every day, we could have 10, 12. We've had as many as 18 children in our emergency department waiting for mental health services. Today, we have to send those children out of our hospital, sometimes out of our region, sometimes out of our state for care. So the children have been waiting very, very long, a very, very long time for this, and we can't wait to get it open for them so that they, they and their families can stay right here in Hampton Roads for care. When we talk about the Priority Toyota Charity Bowl and its involvement with this project, how important is the Charity Bowl to what you're doing here? So we are so humbled and honored and privileged to be part of this Charity Bowl. And we give so much thanks to Dennis Elmer, to the board of the Charity Bowl, to all of the sponsors and vendors who've participated and, and who make this possible to bring real help and hope to our children. Uh, all of the charities that are served and CHKD is so grateful for the work of the Charity Bowl because it makes a true difference in the lives of our children. Nearly 40 children's charities right here in Hampton Roads and Northeastern North Carolina are benefiting from the generosity of this year's Charity Bowl. I'd like to introduce you to some of them. Fear to Freedom, helping to restore dignity and hope to child survivors of sexual assault while empowering and educating students and communities to combat sexual violence. The Food Bank of Southeastern Virginia and the Eastern Shore, a member of Feeding America and the Federation of Virginia Food Banks, leading the effort to fight hunger in our community since 1981. Four Kids Incorporated, breaking the cycle of homelessness and poverty for families and children in Southeastern Virginia with programs designed to achieve long-term stability for families and a lifetime of success for children. The Hampton Roads Youth Foundation, improving the lives of children in Hampton Roads by training them as role models and teaching the tools that will allow them to be productive adults. Horizon Hampton Roads, an academic, cultural, and recreational program designed to encourage a diverse group of students from low-income families in Norfolk, Portsmouth, and Virginia Beach to realize their full potential. The Judeo Christian Outreach Center empowers homeless families and veterans to recover from crisis situations and return to being self-supporting, productive, and independent members of our community. Life Rolls On aims to improve the quality of life for young people affected by spinal cord injury through adaptable surfing and skating that can inspire infinite possibilities beyond paralysis.
Norfolk CASA, whose mission is to support and promote court-appointed volunteer advocates so every child can be safe from harm, establish permanency, and have the opportunity to thrive. The Ping Pong Gives Charity Foundation has a mission to improve mental wellness, physical fitness, and social engagement through ping pong and integrating table tennis programs into the community, specifically schools. Pink Collar Cares is a nonprofit group committed to encouraging positive self-image in today's youth. They distribute personal hygiene kits, helping children in need arrive to their learning environment clean, groomed, and ready to learn. Rock Solid Foundation builds hope for children fighting cancer through its ready bag and playset programs. They believe when a child is playing, their cancer battle is the last thing on their mind, and it's in those moments that play defeats cancer. Samaritan House, which fosters personal safety, self-sufficiency, and personal growth in adults and their children through freedom from domestic and sexual violence, human trafficking, and preventing homelessness. Hi, I'm Adam Chase, Vice President and General Manager of WTKR-TV. We at News 3 are honored to once again be a part of the 52nd Annual Priority Toyota Charity Bowl. Despite the many challenges of the past year, this event has raised more than $770,000, and every penny stays right here in Hampton Roads to benefit 39 different children's charities. Whether it's supporting families through pediatric cancer treatment or assisting children with special needs, thanks to your generosity, these local organizations will be able to continue their individual missions to benefit our community. Again, thank you from all of us here at News 3. This is an exciting day here at the ODU campus. We have a special guest to tell you more about one of the missions we're highlighting today. This is Jenna Verga with the Old Dominion Athletic Foundation. Thanks so much for being with us today. People have probably heard of ODAF. What is your mission? Our mission is to raise funds for all 18 of our intercollegiate programs here at Old Dominion University and our 450 student athletes. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but it's wonderful work. And this is an amazing event that we have here today at the stadium going on behind us, the amazing uh, charity bowl football game. You're not out there, uh, no, but, no. but this, this is some important work that's being done yes. with this event. This is the most wonderful uh, community event. It's amazing what Dennis Elmer and his team at Priority have put together to benefit so many charities in the area. And we're just fortunate to be one of them. I mean, it, it's just great to see everybody supporting the, the players out on the field and all the charities in the area. It's, it's been great. It's, it's a great partnership that we have with Dennis and his team. You know, with the pandemic, you know, things have shifted a little bit, but we are excited for this year. Can't wait for next year as well. We hope to see you out on the field. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Okay, no you'll promises, see me in the stands right? for sure. Thanks so much, Jetta. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nearly 40 children's charities right here in Hampton Roads and Northeastern North Carolina are benefiting from the generosity of this year's Charity Bowl. I'd like to introduce you to some of them. Special Olympics Virginia Beach providing year round sports training and athletic competition in a variety of Olympic type sports for children and adults with intellectual disabilities. St. Mary's Home for Disabled Children, which has a mission to provide quality, personalized care for children and adults with complex medical and behavioral needs so they can achieve their fullest potential. Stop Incorporated aims to reduce the effects of poverty by assisting low and moderate wage earners with education, employment, housing and health to improve their quality of life. Storehouse Food Pantry provides groceries to supplement the food needs of families in Virginia Beach. The Don Carey Reach Foundation gives opportunities to students that will increase their academic achievement and expose them to diverse opportunities. Their primary goal is to encourage students to explore science, technology, engineering, and math. The Eliza Hope Foundation, providing a center that meets the individualized needs of children with autism spectrum disorder and other developmental delays, including equipment, therapy, and other specialized services. Tidewater Friends of Foster Care, striving to ensure that all children in the foster care system have the opportunity to thrive. Toby's Dream Foundation, created to ensure that children living in Hampton Roads with life-threatening illnesses have the opportunity and resources to imagine and experience their most fantastic dream. 
Virginia Beach CASA, a private nonprofit organization committed to advocating for the best interest of children involved in the court process, specifically abused and neglected children. And Young Life Multi Ethnic, whose purpose is to build leadership teams to walk alongside adolescents during their turbulent years in high school and college and help them become productive members of society. Welcome back to the 52nd Annual Priority Toyota Charity Bowl here on the campus of Old Dominion University at SB Ballard Stadium. I'm Jessica Larche. I want to tell you now about Ken Lee's and an idea for a ping pong tournament. He had that idea in 2008 to do the tournament to raise money for poverty. That first game had 75 players and raised $5,000. Today, that event has 200 players and has raised $70,000. And it's all for charities that help people struggling with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Oh, is it ping pong or is it table tennis? So the right answer there is that table tennis is really the sport. Ping pong is the game. As a matter of fact, ping pong is a registered trademark term and it's a brand of equipment much like Kleenex is. So Ping Pong Gives is a nonprofit 501c3 nonprofit organization. And our whole mission is to improve mental health and brain fitness. And so we do that by integrating table tennis programs into the community. For example, our seniors, we're in 26 retirement communities having provided table tennis programs um, for our seniors. We're also in schools with the table tennis sports and education program. And so any business or organization that we can partner with that allows us to bring table tennis to gives us the platform to talk about mental health and all the cool things that happen in the brain when playing ping pong. So the interesting thing is that while any activity is good for the brain, playing table tennis, playing ping pong, is one of the best therapeutic exercises for the brain. And most don't recognize that. So this all started maybe 15 years ago with the first study out of Japan that proved all of the things that are happening with the brain after just two minutes of playing. So your prefrontal cortex is being activated. If I just hit a shot and he blew it, his temporal brain is going to have to manage the anger and it's all happening very quickly. So again, any activity is good for the brain. So the beauty of what we do really is of benefit to everyone, regardless of age, regardless of skill, um, or regardless of whether you um, um, are all together physically or you may have some limitations. If you're in a wheelchair, you can play. If you have ADHD, you can play. If you have dementia, you can play, or Parkinson's, or any of those brain-related um, needs. It's been proven that playing table tennis is really fun. So whether you're eight or 98, ping pong is for everyone. But playing table tennis is one of the best, not to mention the benefits physically of playing and then the social engagement features. So that's why we do what we do. And if you think about most nonprofit organizations, when they raise awareness and raise funding for their organization, they'll do it through a sporting event. Typically, it's a golf outing. Typically, it's a walk or a run. But when was the last ping pong event that came to your town? And so that's what we've been doing over the last 12 years with our ping pong for charity events. For kids, they may not be the, the star football player or basketball player, high profile sports player, but table tennis, again, is for everyone, whether you're a guy or a girl. Um, it's, another alternative than maybe the iPhone or the TV screen. So we're glad to be a part of the priority op um, opportunity and just so blessed to be um, considered for uh, being a beneficiary.
And this year's ping pong tournament is October 8th and 9th at Camp Grom in Virginia Beach. Now, I have never played table tennis. <laughs> I'm not sure that I would be so good at it, but I would give it a go for charity. There's the coordination, the hand-eye thing. I just don't have that down pat. I'll watch with some <laughs> snacks and a drink. Everybody will be happy. Well, this this has been a fantastic day here at SB Ballard Stadium on the campus of Old Dominion University. The 52nd annual Priority Toyota Charity Bowl. We've raised almost $800,000 for charities right here at home. And I can't wait until next year. The date's already been set. It's April 9th, so mark your calendars even bigger and better right here on the field. Are you playing next year? I'll be cheering on the sidelines. We'll, How about that? We'll be cheering. We <laughs> hope you cheer us on as well. Thank you so much for joining us here on News 3.